Hello and welcome. I am Chakshu Roy and you're watching Laws in the Making on Rajya Sabha TV. Today on the show, we are discussing the Arms Amendment Act 2019. To discuss the amendment, I have on the show with me Mr. Subhidat Sundaram, Advocate of the Supreme Court of India, and Mr. Anil Chaudhary, former Secretary, Internal Security, Ministry of Home Affairs. The Arms Act 1959 regulates the acquisition and ownership of guns in India with the issuance of gun licenses. The Act also covers manufacture, sale, import and export of arms and ammunition. The 2019 Arms Amendment changes possession and license provisions mentioned in the current Act and enhances punishment for certain offences. The existing gun control law in India, as defined in the Arms Act 1959, classifies firearms into two categories, prohibited bore weapons and non-prohibited bore weapons. All semi and fully automatic firearms fall under the prohibited category. Government issued licenses are required for both prohibited and non-prohibited weapons. Ordinary citizens can carry up to three firearms today with a license. The licenses remain valid for three years and can be extended. Arms Act Amendment, they are long overdue because it was made somewhere it's a long years and required amendment. First of all, the few, two points of amendment is that you cannot get a license for more than two weapons. Earlier it used to be three also. Then multi-licensing has been stopped. You can get only one license and that also for two weapons, if you want to have two weapons. Second is that as far as the prohibited weapons are concerned, prohibited bore is concerned, it is completely made very stringent. If people are dealing with prohibited bore, even the possessor, the trader and the manufacturer, they can be held under law. And the penalty is very severe. Earlier was that prohibited bore unauthorized weapons being manufactured and sold, the penalty was maximum up to 14 years, starting from somewhere 7 years. Now the penalty is that it will be life imprisonment till death. So that is which is proposed. The proposed amendment in the Arms Act increases the validity of the gun licenses to 5 years from 3 years. The amendment also specifies that no individual can possess or carry more than one firearm. Once the Act comes into effect, individuals will have one year to deposit the remaining firearms at the nearest police station. The deposited firearms will be delicensed within three months. What they propose to do in this uh, Amendment Act is that number one, uh, they have made the penalties for those in possession of or engaged in manufacture of or selling of uh, prohibited weapons. Uh, the punishment has been made more stringent. Uh, these prohibited weapons, I mean some of them are of course manufactured in India, but a lot of prohibited weapons are coming uh, uh, to northeastern regions. Why, I mean from uh, uh, Thailand, uh, they, the source being actually China. From China it comes to Thailand and from Thailand uh, the, the people, from, the insurgent groups go from India. In Bangkok the transaction is carried out. And then the weapons are ordered, uh, there is a factory in Yunnan which produces these weapons. These weapons come to Thailand and from Thailand they are routed through Myanmar into India's northeast. And from northeast, once they reach the northeast, the northeast insurgent groups like NSC and IM, they uh, further resell it. The current gun control legislation prescribes penalties for violation of the Act. The 2019 amendment increases the punishment for firearms manufacturers and sellers violating the provisions of the Act. The punishment will be a prison term of at least seven years, extending up to a life sentence. They may also be fined. There are currently about 37 lakh gun licenses that are issued in the country. Uh, Mr. Chaudhary, I wanted to start the program with you and ask you as to what is the current regime uh, for owning a gun and then getting a license for it? Uh, Chakshu, first you must obtain a license after demonstrating and proving that you need uh, the weapon that you want to get or buy. Uh, for what purpose? For your defense, for your sports, whatever. You have to convince them and then also the safety of the weapon that you get. 
how will you make make sure that it is kept safe then you get a license and then you are allowed to purchase the weapon and then use it for the purpose for which it has been licensed that is the regime the licensing authorities are in the states district magistrates deputy commissioners etc and the verification process is done by the police the licensing is limited to the state normally but if there's an interstate license required i think you need the concurrence of the ministry of home affairs union ministry of home affairs so that is the regime in position and uh, that is the way it is but the problem is a very large number of illicit country made weapons are in circulation and you can go and buy them off the shelf in large parts and areas remote areas of bihar up punjab north not in the south fortunately Okay, so with that, uh, so Mr. Chaudhary talked about you know uh, the process of licensing. You as a lawyer also see a number of co- uh, you know cases coming to court for violation of the Arms Act. Can you give us a general overview of what are the kind of cases that come to court? So in fact, uh, people uh, they hold you know all these arms and ammunitions either for self defence or for you know attacking or you know just inflicting harm on the others. Now both. are having you know pros and cons in the sense like if you talk about holding you know arms and ammunition for self defense it's okay but for what self defense means at some point of time you would be taking the revolver or maybe the pistol and you know you will bang on someone because out of i mean probably out of a fit of rage you would do that so criminal offense i mean indulging in any criminal sort of offense uh, just because you carry a gun or it is there in your cupboard so that itself is one of the reasons why you are in fact losing your temperament and uh, you know uh, you know attacking someone that is one number two uh, what you would see around in and around us uh, people indulge in drugs people indulge in uh, alcoholism all these things would lead to uh, easy you know i mean making money easily so they feel like you know they want to procure a gun just for their safety or maybe you know through some easy means they need to get what whatever they want so these are the i mean criminal offenses and criminal criminal activities uh, is is one of the reasons why people really want procure you know weapons and in courts uh, all the criminal i mean uh, victims victims they come uh, in through the state because they have been attacked by someone not because of uh, the, the times have gone uh, people are attacking with the uh, swords or knives now people have guns so it, it's easily you know they have they can procure from a licensed dealer so this is what the problem now that we are seeing so a sort of uh, gun policy or a you know uh, gun control mechanism need to be in place and i hope that uh, this new amendment would you know achieve the intent okay Mr. Chaudhary, uh, you know, while arms are licensed and owning, you know, a specified bore weapon uh, requires you to go through a process. It's not an easy process. It's not as if, you know, I go and apply for a license today and I'll get a license. Uh, you know, the authorities will come and visit me. Uh, I think there's a personal interview process. Can you give us a little more detail about when you were, you know, in the state and you had to issue a license? what are the kinds of checks that are there in the process before you obtain a license yes it's a very elaborate uh, inquiry which is supposed to be done by the local police and the special branch the cid as to what is who's the person who's applying for a license what is the kind of reputation he has they'll talk to the neighbor they'll talk to his you know what and then what about his need now so for instance if i'm a person who has to travel at night by road cross the uh, uh, boundaries of states then perhaps you would say yes i need this to f- protect myself because there are you know on the way there are dacoities taking place people are holding up cars so i said that's one and, and then the second thing is um, that he must demonstrate where is he going to keep this weapon and their bullets safe from children safe from the reach of people working at home visiting his home under lock and key with himself so there are several angles to it I, in my view you see it's this uh, amendment which is sought to be being made it it's good it's very elaborate and it's good but the challenge shall lie 
in its implementation. How are you going to make sure that all these uh, stringent punishments which have been laid down are, are carried out you know, through due process of law? They'll have to arrest the person, take him to the court and prove that he was doing something wrong. Then as I said earlier, the problem also is illicit, unlicensed weapons and bullets. And we'll talk which, about which is there's no account of it. And a number of uh, licenses which were issued galore to fight against terrorists in the Punjab, in Kashmir, also in, in uh, Naxal affected areas, the, we issued licenses. And those licenses, those guns, weapons are not being accounted for. Where are they? We must first track, track them down, trace them, have them deposited. And um, so that is it. It's uh, very complicated. It's not going to be easy. You know, the implementation will rest with the state police forces. The act is central. Yes, it is a central act. It will be passed. It will be good. Everybody, nobody wants weapons to be used for criminal activity. Nobody. No law-abiding citizen. But the problem is not law-abiding citizens. The problem is the criminals okay. who will do anything. Okay. And, and we'll talk about that. Uh, so, we, one of the things, you know, we talked about is uh, uh, the reduction in the number of guns that you can own and, you know, carry on to you. Uh, earlier, the limit was three. And before that, you could have multiple weapons. But when the act came into being, the idea was that you could keep three weapons and the rest you had to deposit, you know, with your local police station. Now that limit is brought down to one. What are the, some of the other provisions in the existing Arms Act mm. which talk about, you know, how do you keep a weapon, what is the kind of safety training that you have to take, what are the kind of offences in the existing regulation? Uh, see, broadly, let me just put it, you know, before I, you know, actually answer that question. Uh, see, there are multiple studies in the US which says that the restriction brought or stringent regulation brought in uh, with respect to possession of armed weapon has drastically reduced the number of suicide rates, drastically reduced the number of criminal activities in the US. There are recorded studies. So, considering that in India, as you said rightly earlier, the regime was multiple, you know, uh, weapons you, know, you can possess. Now, it has brought down to three and the proposed legislation uh, is targeting one gun, sorry, one firearm uh, for one person, okay, which is in fact good. The reason is criminal, uh, I mean, tendency would, you know, reduce this, uh, I mean, someone who is actually in, in depression or maybe uh, having, what do you call for that, uh, he's in fact having psychological issues, his temptation of shooting himself or, you know, committing a suicide also comes down. So. This is this is this this need to be you know considered before answering uh, like you know what was the, I mean what 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 happens before the uh, you know nineteen I mean uh, uh, nine, twenty nineteen and okay. incidentally you know one of the things that is there in the existing act is before you are given an arms license you have to sit down for an in person interview with a senior police officer yeah. who then judges by asking you questions about whether you need it for self defense whether you need it for sporting activities whether you need to protect uh, your crop and your land uh, from wild animals. But, uh, you know, that's the time uh, that we have in the first part of the thing, uh, first part of the program. It's time for us to head into a break. When we come back, we look at the new provisions added in the bill to cover arms trafficking, criminal organizations and celebrate the gunfire. Welcome back. On the program today, we are discussing the Arms Amendment Act 2019. The amendment seeks to change the 1959 Arms Act with enhanced punishment for certain offences and amendments to the gun licence and ownership. The proposed amendment introduces new provisions in the bill to address illicit firearm traffickers and groups indulging in organised crime. Members of organised crime, syndicates as well as illicit traffickers who violate the provisions of the law will be punished with a prison term of a minimum of 10 years extending to a life sentence. They may also be subjected to a fine. There were a lot of complaints about misuse of firearms. 
even high court and supreme court have passed strictures against misuse of firearms accordingly ministry of home has issued a, uh, a paper for uh, amendment and overhauling the arms act uh, the license period of the firearms is uh, from 3 years is increased to 5 years or less and uh, secondly many new offenses are being added and uh, as per the existing provisions uh, punishment is also being increased in many cases of offenses the proposed amendment introduces a new provision for the celebratory gunfire which may risk the personal safety of others individuals who use firearms in public gatherings such as religious places marriage parties and other functions for celebration can be jailed for up to 2 years or fined up to 1 lakh rupees or both prohibited weapons by individuals has been made an offense but possession of such weapons uh, which are prohibited or which have been imported for unlawful purposes by organized groups organized criminal syndicates for that the punishment could be even more severe I mean, it could be even death penalty I mean, because they are engaged in uh, you can say waging war against the government I mean these insurgent groups which we have in the northeast it's not necessary to name them because there are so many of them but these insurgent groups which are waging war against the government with weapons which they have managed to get from foreign countries uh, which are not uh, available anywhere in india or which are available in india but the bores are prohibited i think for them the the penalty should be even more severe the arms act states that the use of prohibited firearms that result in the death of any person shall be punishable with death a 2011 amendment bill sought to replace this mandatory death sentence with death or life imprisonment and fine following a supreme court judgment the bill lapsed without passing the 2019 amendment bill has incorporated this provision mr chaudhary in the first part of the program one of the things that we were discussing was uh, you know people who are outside the purview of the law so people who don't have a license and one of the provisions that is being added is a stringent provision to deter you know organized uh, activity of you know transfer of weapons or import of weapons uh, you know what do you think is the current situation in india when it comes to import of either weapons or you know smuggling of weapons or even production of illegal weapons actually like i said uh, you see to make the arms act possession or use uh, more stringently punishable is laudable it is welcome but the point is let us try to divide this use of the weapons by criminals for gain or for enmity or for you know as they say they are hired criminals you supari leke dete hain then the other groups which are using it is the terrorist groups indulging in um, anti national activities trying to intimidate society to challenge the sovereignty and democracy in this country both are using these weapons but more the criminals for gain the criminals who are operating in kashmir the terrorists operating in kashmir the northeast or naxal areas are mostly using automatic weapons procured from outside not made in india so uh, the we are now dealing with people man, arm being manufactured in india Ill illegally used being by criminal interstate gangs that's a challenge you see earlier every state the crime used to be committed in one village you go to another forest and hide now it are interstate gangs which are operating across the states so the, the 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 enforcement of this also becomes a challenge they will have to constitute interstate specialized uh, anti gun groups to go against these uh, people who are either manufacturing or selling then unfortunately there is also a nexus between these gangs and the people in power you see there is that's a reality which we have to also deal with let us face it we know there are places where people are moving around with illegal arms freely and of course on weddings and others gone are the days you see there's no there's no point in firing at weapon 
when you were taking a barat from a village through the forest, you fired in the air. It made some sense. But now in the cities or even in towns, if you're firing, you're endangering human life. It makes no sense to me why you should fire. You can celebrate by, by other means, by lighting lamps and things like that. So it makes huge sense. But then the, the, the challenge shall lie in the implementation by the local police, by the local uh, power, you know, the political leadership, the bureaucratic leadership, they all have to come together to fight this menace together. Okay. So with that, two interesting points. One is uh, people who do not comply with the Arms Act. There's a new section that is being added uh, to prohibit them. Uh, people who comply with the Arms Act, they have a license to carry a gun, but then they use the gun for a purpose which is not intended. Right? And then th there's one example of which is coming out. What is it that you see in the courts about illegal use of licensed weapons when it comes to India? Oh, uh, it is punishable offense. It is a punishable offense earlier also. But however, now, uh, if you just peruse the, uh, you know, I mean, the proposed bill, which is yet to be, you know, introduced in the parliament in this winter session, uh, all the punishments have been more, say, if it is three years, it has become seven years. If it earlier position was seven years, it has become a ten years. Now, most of the offenses are punishable uh, for an imprisonment for a term of uh, life imprisonment and also fine. So, it's, it, it clearly indicates that this legislation really want to curb such illegal trafficking of arms and ammunition. Uh, any sort of parallel trade that is happening with guns. And, and I unfortunately uh, would like to uh, you know, draw the attention that the more the stringent laws, the illegal active, I mean parallel uh, you know, trade is going to happen. That is the other side, because any state where alcohol is prohibited, parallelly, you know, there would be alcohol manufacturing, sale happening, trade happening. So, wherever drugs are prohibited, parallelly, you know, these, these activities uh, take place. Similarly, even, uh, you know, stringent licensing regime would definitely, you know, you know bring up a sort of parallel uh, trade. And which is, which is, you know, in fact, as you know, earlier, you know, Sir was telling that uh, it challenges, in, front, I mean, in fact, before the state missionary and the system to, uh, you know, actually attain or maybe implement the, the good intention of the uh, legislature, which I, I hope that, you know, it would, to a large extent, they would achieve. And, uh, and, and regarding the, uh, you know, misuse of weapons, uh, in terms of export, import and all these activities, that will drastically come down because uh, earlier people would take it for granted. Now, they will think twice before indulging in these activities. Okay. That's for sure. The proof of the pudding is in the eating and the proof of a good law is in good implementation. Mr. Chaudhary, one of the things that we were also talking about was, you know, the licenses, the number of guns that you can now have for a license. Earlier it was three, now it's come down to one. Uh, what do you think about that? I think it makes a huge sense to me to reduce it to one. See, gone are the days when we went out hunting or we went out for uh, all kinds of things, big game, duck shooting. So why should you have more than one weapon? No, I think just one licensed weapon is more than enough. It's a very good move, according to me. And But then the other problem is, see, bringing uh, the culprit to book, given the current state of our criminal justice system, it takes years and years for a person to be convicted. So, From the Sessions Court to the High Court. See, that is the thing. So, the criminals, knowing fully well they, that they can sit back and get on bail, even in non-bailable offences. And so, the, it's not going to be that much of a deterrence, I'm afraid, as it should be. It's not. But uh, then it's a good move. Yes, nobody is going to question the move because nobody wants weapons to be carried around and, and indulging in criminal activity, either against the state or against individuals or against property or life, anything. That's a good move. But like I said before, it is going to be a huge task to bring these illicit gun manufacturers, cash them, collect evidence, put them to court on trial and get them convicted. 
I would just add to uh, sir, what sir said that it is not about, uh, I mean, it, it's not about uh, severity of punishment. It is about the certainty of punishment. Uh, let the, uh, you know, culprit be brought on records and make sure, the, let the system make sure that he is punished. In, in most of the cases, we, I mean, the, uh, you know, uh, I mean, culprits are escaping the hands of law. So, okay. So it's not the severity, but the certainty of punishment correct, that counts. Correct. You know, last two minutes of the program, so I just want to get both your final comments on what will be the impact of this proposed amendment. So with that first from you on people who actually own guns. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's very simple because there was a law already. It was, uh, you know, like, you know, there was some sort of de deterrence, but now there is a proposed law which is having more deterrence. Now, I just want to add something. You know, in earlier in Britain, you know, there was a system where for pickpockets, for pickpocketing, you know, the punishment was death, hanging. Okay. Now, when the hanging was done in the public space, people all gather there, hundreds of people gather to witness the, uh, you know, uh, guy who is actually being hanged. And among the, uh, you know, audience, there were instances of pickpocketing. That means death for pickpocketing is n having no, no deterrence. People are still committing pickpocketing. So the deterrence fails. So here in this you know, legislation, what the parliament is you know, intending is more stringent laws. The idea of the implementation of the deterrence will always be in question, but that does not mean that there should be no deterrence in law. No, <laughs> well, Chandri, we will, final, it's, it's a good attempt. It's a good attempt. Mr. Chandri, attempt. final comments. What will be the impact when it comes to licensing or for our uh, law and order machinery in the state? See, that is to be seen yet. Too soon to uh, make any pronouncements at this moment. Let us see how it rolls out, how it is implemented, like I said earlier. But let me take you to the U.S., my fellow panel panelist brought out the U.S., where, you know, there's a gun lobby and many states you do not need a license to possess weapons. See, and but yet there are people who are committing crimes uh, with these unlicensed weapons and there's a, there's a lobby which is for weapons, other than other one, but they are not giving in. In ma most of the states in the U.S., you, do, you can keep weapons, even automatic weapons. In See, India, un a, unfortunately, that's all the time we have the program. But in India, we have an arms act, which yeah. which makes sure that you can only own licensed weapons. And you know that's all the time that we have in the program today. Thank you, Mr. Chaudhary. Thank you, Subhidat, for joining us on this discussion. It is time for us to end the show. You can watch our shows on the RSTV page of YouTube. We will be back with a new issue and a new episode. Keep watching Rajasabha TV.